just what to do. You take this. We interrupt this program. Oh, we bring it in. Oh, baby. A perfect football. Me, son. None of that. Hey. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Keep spamming. Don't stop. <laughs> oh. oh. S-Groove. Oh. Oh. What happened there? Oh, my God. Hello, and welcome to Die. It is Frame Trap. What the hell? <laughs> For the week. <laughs> Oh, November 1st, we are live here at Southtown Arcade in San Francisco, California. My name is Mr. Jared, uh, community manager of Twitch TV and creative director of iPlayWinner. And right here to my left, as always, the CEO and founder of iPlayWinner, yeah. <laughs> Viscant. How are you doing? No, <laughs> no it's Hans. It's yeah. Hans. How are you? Come, you know, still uh, 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 savoring the evil Marvel win. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, did a, you did a really great job at Evo. You know, you got first place. No one, you know, there are those who said that that day would never come. Well, what are, what are they to say now? Anyways, Viscant, we're very, uh, we're very happy to see you here, as always. Yeah. All right, we got to stop saying that. This yeah. is Hans. <laughs> Hans, what did you do this weekend? How are you, man? Uh, I competed in a uh, CBS2 tournament, and you it did. was awesome. Good, good, uh, tr pure honest fighting games. <laughs> pure honest fighting games. That's what it was. Um, no, it was, it was, it was awesome. It was right here at uh, Southtown Arcade, mm -hmm. and um, you know the the last uh, old people uh, tournament that we had. You know, CBS Two had like twelve entrants, mm -hmm. um, and that's you know a pretty good turnout for for uh, CBS Two. Yeah, for CBS. Uh, yeah, for like CBS. <laughs> sucks to say that because <laughs> CBS Two is such an amazing game. But yeah, it's, uh, it's that a, is unfortunately good numbers. Yeah, it's it's um, yeah, fantastic game. But this week we or this this month we got even more. It's up to six, we got a sixteen man bracket this time around. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I was I was pretty hyped, but uh, you know it's it was um, nice no, it was full bracket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. It was it was it was cool because um, it just shows that people still have love for those for those old games. Yeah. You know. Totally. And uh, it was just good to see people coming out. Lots of people tuning in on Sundays to to watch that stuff. And mm -hmm. um, you know I don't know I just I just like playing CBS too. It's so Damn hard. <laughs> yeah, you know? it is a hard game to jump <laughs> yeah. back into. That game does not <laughs> hold your hand; it just smacks it away. Actually, well, it's you like know? you know, you play you play uh, Marvel three or or anything, and mm -hmm. you know, that's, it's a great that's a great game. It's a lot of fun, but you know, it's just you know, doing combos is just like you know, it's a walk in the park in that game yeah. for the most part. In but CBS two, if I do a combo in like. An entire set. I'm just so so hyped. So, and I yeah. think I did one combo uh, uh, during the entire tournament. So, all right. But what what is three hits? Four hits? It was it was actually uh, I think it was a five hit combo with Kyo. Yeah, it was pretty. It was impressive. pretty dope. Yeah. Very impressive. Very um, impressive. But what what continues to boggle my mind is how I'm doing better in CBS two tournaments here than Third Strike. Most people know me as a Third Strike player, but mm -hmm. I've just been going two and out and. Uh, Pretty much every third strike tournament and going like two and two at CBS. But anyway, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was mm -hmm. it was really cool. What what's up with you? Uh, actually, I spent my weekend also watching some classic geezer games. I was watching the King of GGPO tournament that oh, was being right. yeah. uh, you know handled by Arturo mm -hmm. Sabin of mm -hmm. Team Spooky. And uh, yeah, so that was if you guys didn't watch, it was an online uh, Super Street Fighter Two Turbo tournament. Uh, he had he ran into a couple. of Technical snags, but uh, you know, I think I think I think he learned a lot about what it meant to uh, to be a fighting game. You know, master. you know what? He, he actually messaged me on Skype. I think it was like the day afterwards. He's like, "Man, I have so much respect for you, yeah. Spooky now because this stuff it's such a blow up." Yeah, uh, but, uh, yeah. but it was it was yeah. really cool just to see Super Turbo like, right. on a stream again. So that was really cool. He got a lot of viewers for that. So that was yeah. He really said like seven eight hundred people tuned in or something. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. too bad. Yeah. Yeah. For 
watching Super Turbo yeah. again. Yeah. And it, again, it also kind of sucks to say, like, yeah, that's really good numbers for. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's like these are these are really old games that uh, that don't get enough respect. It's true. Yeah. Respect. Real honest fighting games. So, on the agenda tonight, tons of news for Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom uh, 3, and also, we are just a week away from Ultimate NorCal 2, uh, right right here at Southtown Arcade, right here on Frame Trap, so next week, you'll be able to tune in and watch what I believe will be the final build of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, just about. Well, you know, stick stick around a little later in the show, I'll I'll tell you all about it. Um, Got a a few surprises in store, that's for sure. Okay. And if that that is not your cup of tea, we got Street Fighter Cross Tekken, are you... Do you, are you ready to talk about gems? Because God knows we have not talked enough about gems on this show. Yeah, it's, well, at this point, it's like, what's an episode of Frame Trap without bashing uh, uh, the gems? It is, it is so. truly outrageous how we, how we manage to do this every single week. Also, uh, new news on uh, King Fighter 13, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, more on Ultimate North Cover's Capcom 2. So when we come back, we will get right back into it. Stay tuned. We don't want that. We don't need that. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Frame Trap here on iPlay Winner TV, live from the surface of the sun. <laughs> yeah. you, we should really, we should have really told NASA that we were going to do this because this is actually kind of an amazing feat of human engineering, or at least Sephora. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, was that a self blow up or? Yeah. All right. Anyways, <laughs> Ultimate Marvel's Capcom three. There, there are two new characters. I, I'm sure <laughs> I you, was blown away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, th- I thought there was there was no more left to reveal. I thought we were all done. I yeah. thought we knew. I thought we had already known every single character for Ultimate Marvel's Capcom three. But surprises abound mm-hmm. as uh, Capcom reveals Rocket Raccoon and Frank West. Of course, uh, Frank West from Dead Rising and Rocket Raccoon from Rocket Raccoon. So, I believe we have the, the trailers here for you. Actually, no. To tell you the truth, Rocket Raccoon uh, debuted in the 70s. He's a cosmic-powered uh, uh, character in the Marvel Universe. That means he's way out there, uh, chilling with Nova in deep, deep outer space. Uh, he's actually part of the Guardians of Galaxy, which, um, just to, to give you an idea of the, uh, I guess, the uh, um, you know the, the, the uh, level of which you know we're dealing with here, Guardians of the Galaxy, the most notable member is uh, Adam Warlock. So... There's your bar to kind of judge his uh, notoriety there. <laughs> okay, yeah, exactly. Um, so what do you think? I mean, do you, you get a chance to really really dissect the trailers at all? Or I know you're not much of a Marvel player, but I mean, just... Oh, just, yeah, just I, from... was, I was watching this. I mean, he, he, he definitely is a lot more interesting than, than I expected. I thought, honestly, I thought he was actually going to be kind of a joke character because, I mean, he's, he's a raccoon and he's digging through the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, it turns out he's, like, kind of a foul-mouthed Australian <laughs> space raccoon with rocket launchers right. so um i all right well here's a question for you he's another really small character does right that, does that uh does that disturb you because he's gonna be another guy who might uh you know your typical combos might not actually work on him well yeah i was about i was about to say you know much like amateurs and in in you know vanilla uh who was you know always just re- really really annoying character to, to mm-hmm. play against and uh you know i think a lot of people mained amateurs just because he could duck under like sentinels beams and mm-hmm. and just you know avoid a lot of attack uh, attacks overall and i think rocket Ra- looks like rocket raccoon is going to be sort of in that same vein uh where he looks really tricky probably mm-hmm. yeah like a lot of combos won't work on him because he's so small. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think he, I think he looks awesome. Um, you know, in the in the trailer we just saw, you know, he has a, he has a burrow, which I think would mm-hmm. be really useful. Um, Do you think that might be considered something of a teleport in a way? Only on the ground, though. Maybe. I mean, yeah. I, I it, it kind of depends on like how long you can stay burrowed, or if it even works that way, right. or if it is like a teleport where it's just it goes, you know, a, a set distance. Mm-hmm. I'm not really too sure right now, but uh, uh, I went one one thing that I thought was. Um, Really cool about the character is just basically like all this, just the the wide variety of attacks he has. He yeah. has like the the swinging log, the the that was straight up like Ewok style. <laughs> yeah, <you know? laughs> the, re- the results in 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 a in a wall bounce, um, mm-hmm. which you know if you know if you watch trailers, you see him follow up with a combo and stuff like that. And then uh, looks like he can self OTG with um, I guess like the 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 bear trap uh, attacks. Was that the one that kind of springs up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. I, I think I've been playing a little too much Orcs Must Die because that was like very Tecmo's Deception, like trap springing out. So I thought that was actually pretty cool. Right. So I think I think once you put all that together, he's going to be like a really 
tricky character and who will be able to, I think, f- fin pretty well on on his own. Mm-hmm. Uh, from what I've seen, it looks like Ultimate Marvel. Just from what we've seen, like uh, uh, you know, Ultimate NorCal and stuff, seems like it's a much more sort of zone zoning based mm-hmm. game. Um, and you know, he has a lot of projectiles and looks like he has a ton of mobility. So I think you know, I think he's going to be pretty good in the game. But you know, we'll okay. see. Okay, I want to get your thoughts on why you think it's a zoning game a bit later. But uh, I think we should actually hop right into Frank West here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because we we have a lot of changes to talk about sure. in just a moment here. So Frank West, if you guys aren't familiar from the Dead Rising series, I am actually glad that they went with the look he had in the Tatsunoku series. Because in Dead Rising two, he starts getting kind of the the thinning hair at the top and makes him have a huge, freakishly large forehead. So I'm glad they kind of went with the original Frank West design. Okay. No, wait, wait. In this, in this second one, wasn't that like Chuck? Green? Oh, but he, he the... is in the second one. He, they, oh, he uh, is? Okay. Yeah, he's like a, uh, they also just released a, a new uh, Dead Rising where he's the star. But uh, also, Frank West has some, some interesting gameplay. Uh, zombie zombie assist aside, right there, you saw I take a picture and he uh, leveled up. Now, does that level up his attacks? Well, it's, okay, so I, wa- yeah, I watched the... Um I watched these a couple of times, and if you if you sort of stick with it, you'll see that after it, it, the, okay, right there, it looks like his attacks start doing more hits, mm-hmm. and then later on, uh, well, that's cool. It goes right through uh, projectiles, but uh, later on, you'll see that it looks like the, the attacks have increased range, uh, and. Yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah, I think that's from uh, that t- is TV from, yeah. TC. That was one of the It's TC. pretty much the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boom. Um, uh, but yeah, it looks like it, it gives his attacks uh, more range and, and, and more hits. Mm-hmm. Um, you see, you know, level one. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. You know, the the the, pro- the properties of, of that move is like an actual attack or mm-hmm. or whatever. But uh, it looks like. Um, it's something you want to inc- incorporate into his game, definitely. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems like that, yeah. that is a very vital component, kind of like how mm-hmm. Phoenix Wright needs to search for evidence to right. do maximum, uh, you know, damage. It mm-hmm. seems like Frank West is very much like, you know, if they're if they're going to build a system into the character, mm-hmm. it, it better be. Uh, and it looks like it, it looks like again, he's another character as a self OTG with the uh, with the camera. So um, you know, he might not uh, have to rely on assists, you know, as much to mm-hmm. keep keep the combos going. And, and uh, this is kind of cool that he can level up while he's. Uh, well, he's comboing. You see right there. It looks like it maybe does more hits, but you know, you know, we don't we don't really know yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks like he, so he has a role, much like uh, Captain America oh, okay. has. So he has a role. He can, you know, so it looks like he he'll be. It looks like it'll be a pretty tricky character. Not 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 on the same level as Rocket Raccoon, but mm-hmm. you know, it, it's it's good that he does ha- have the ability to you know set up some mix-ups with a role mm-hmm. and, and stuff. So um, we'll see how it pans out. Looks like overall though, the impression I got is when I play TVC. Um, uh, Frank West was, he always came out with like a really unorthodox kind of character. Yeah. And it, this looks like he, it is sort of unorthodox, you know, using the camera to level mm-hmm. up and, and whatnot. But it just his overall combos look a little bit more straightforward than TVC. It looks like they're trying to make the character a little bit more accessible compared to TVC. Hmm. Um, I definitely found uh, Frank West's TVC to be one of the weirder characters that they had in that game. Mm-hmm. It wasn't exactly pick up and play from what I remember. I know I'm no KB street, <laughs> but uh, that's you know he he was yeah he definitely wasn't the easiest to pick yeah. up there. So well, I mean I don't think Capcom is actually exactly banking on people having played TVC prior to <laughs> yeah. MC3. I mean it's true. Be, be honest here, yeah. uh, but you know that is not the only news coming out for Ultimate Marvel's Capcom three Capcom uh, roster change log mm-hmm. revealed this week. Tons and tons of character changes. Mm-hmm. You are gonna have to you. you Teach me how to marvel. That's basically yeah. what I'm saying. Teach me how to marvel. Um, you know, I know. A, a, it seems like just the overall response, like on Twitter and uh, uh, in the forums and, and mm-hmm. stuff, seems like a lot of people are kind of upset over a lot of the changes. Oh, can, um, you, can you give some examples on like specific changes on on that are causing? Um, it was it was more just you know those general just just. Twitter messages. This isn't like, the same at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. So, you know, yeah. the, I, you know, I think it largely uh, depends on what character you play. Obviously, with when there's any changes to, to any fighting game, a lot of it comes down to what character you play. How uh, have they been nerfed? Yeah. Have they been buffed? Uh, some of the stuff is a little suspect, like. Um, you know, like Jill re- received some nerfs. Oh, let's see here, like uh, all attacks float a little higher, slightly, slightly decreased forward moving range of crouching medium, slightly reduced hitbox size of all jumping attacks. And like, hmm. it's like, really? Like, were Jill players really the problem? Was it, you know, did you really need to, 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 to uh, yeah. you know, adjust her at all? But, you know, talking to Seth and, and uh, so, some other people, they say that, you know, Jill is one of those characters where she hasn't even, like fully been explore, explored by players. That is true. So that is true. We'll have to see. But, um, you know, overall, looking over the changes, um, you know, I, I'm not really, you know, too upset about anything. Mm-hmm. It looks like uh, 
you know, they, they were nerfing some characters, but they're, they're trying to give, you know, them new, new, uh, new properties uh, mm -hmm. for certain moves. Like, you know, this is the Capcom side of the change list, but an example of that is on the Marvel side. Like, you know, Magneto's a little slower, but he also has uh, that gravitational pull and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so they are giving new move properties to some of the characters. I like how um, Wesker's changes are basically a novel compared to most character changes. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's, that's actually one of the characters where, um, you know, he, he, he obviously... Uh, he did get some some nerfs, but they also they also uh, I guess what is it? Is it when he takes damage? Um, well, damage and speed increase as his sunglasses get damaged. So um, it's it, that's even in the original uh, vanilla. Is this Marvel. fighter's history all of a sudden? Can you like target specific body parts? Well, I mean, <laughs> do you, well, do you, do you remember like in some of his wind poses? You'd see you see him in yes. like one of the one of the uh, um, you know sunglasses would be all busted up, or sometimes they'd be they'd be on at all. So hmm. you know, it's the sunglasses take take damage. Uh, he'll you know become faster and do more damage. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, it looks like you know Amaterasu uh, got a bunch of nerfs, um, pretty much all across the board. But you know, again, it's one of those small characters where you know I think it's gonna it, Amaterasu. I think is gonna be a character where it's really gonna be hard to make her a bad mm -hmm. character because you know, especially with Air X Factor now, you know, it's, it, she has the um, what's the name of it? I, I forget what it's called, but you know, her air super with the uh, the different elements. Oh and, yes. and whatnot, you know. Air X factor out of that and just go right into an X into another one. So, um, you know, so you know, we'll, we'll have to. I, I'm really looking forward to to, to playing the game. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, just to see how this if if this ends up really making like a huge difference in the teams. I, th I think it will. One character that um, I'm a little worried about is uh, Zero. Really, <laughs> it looks like he just uh, got a ton of buffs across the board. But like, you know, Flocker. Just one, right? He's one of those characters <laughs> that maybe didn't need it so much as others. Yeah, and I think it's uh, you know zero zero got played you know obviously more than Jill, but is is probably still one of those characters that is, you don't see it terribly often. Yeah, not not as is explored not, as yeah. as like Magneto and, and Wesker and and some of these some of these other characters. So. Or, or maybe it's more fair to say it's a character that you don't typically see like in top eight. You know, well, I mean, yeah, until recently, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, thanks, Flocker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'm just going down the list. Uh, oh, and then you know, a huge. Um, I think one of the 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 biggest nerfs was to uh, uh, Tron and, and Hagger mm -hmm. uh, as assists. You know, they're obviously two of the best uh, assists in the game. You know, mm -hmm. speaking of you know Flocker, he used basically used Tron, uh, which has an invis uh, uh, the invisible assist to cover um, zero. Uh, from pretty much all any danger, mm -hmm. uh, while you know he was building me meter for um, uh, for Phoenix, so mm -hmm. there's no no invincibility there uh, with Hagar. Uh, the uh, the lariat uh, doesn't result in a hard knockdown anymore; it's a soft knockdown. So mm -hmm. um, I guess they can basically just like uh, I think they tech roll out now, and you can't do all the crazy like OTG follow ups. So right. um, I th actually I think that alone, you know, with the Tron and Hagar nerfs, I mean that, that's definitely going to change up a lot of teams. You know, you even see here in NorCal, like I know CJ Sh Showstopper, Crizzle, a lot of these guys will use, um, you know, Hagar on their team just for the invincible assist, you know, the Marvel Two type assist. So mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, I know I know some people probably aren't happy about all these changes, but I think when it's all said and done, the feeling that I'm going that I'm getting here is that it's just going to be a much more balanced game overall. Yeah. And as I was, you know, saying before, it looks like they're. You know they they've toned down the damage on a lot of stuff. They're, it looks like they're taking a lot, a lot of some some of the BS uh, here and there. And isn't it, that the fun in Marvel though? The BS. Well, I think <laughs> with it being Marvel and it being a team based game where you can call assists, and you know half the time, you know if 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 you're not like an experienced player, you don't even know what's going on mm -hmm. anyway. I think it's it's the type of game where it's impossible where there's not going to be some BS. I mean, yeah. I, I give the game maybe probably like you know three or four weeks before we find something that's like okay, you know, yeah. all right. But uh, I don't know. Really looking forward to it. Um, I. And again, as I mentioned before, I think it's it's definitely going to be more. It's still going to have an aggressive uh, uh, edge to it, but mm -hmm. it, it looks like they're trying to make it really more centered around uh, zoning and just you know a real strategic uh, uh, gameplay instead of just you know wave dashing in with an invincible <laughs> assist or something or running away with an invincible <laughs> assist and then uh, following up with an OTG uh, for yeah. the win. So, but well, yeah, hopefully they don't take too much of the BS out of it. You know, am I right, Phoenix players? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, so I just I hope we still see our favorite lady. Yeah, so any, anyway, I mean this the 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 list is huge. I mean each character has it looks like at least five five to ten different changes. So you can go to iplaywinner uh, dot com. The the entire list is is there. You can re read it over, and, uh, and I'm sure everybody's watching this probably has already. But mm -hmm. uh, you know I'm I'm just now finishing it <laughs> you know right now. So yeah. Well, but, yeah. I'm really glad that you got that plug out and that you researched so much for this show. And when we come <laughs> yeah. back.
We're going to have plenty to talk about Street Fighter V? Maybe? I don't really know. So when we come back, stay tuned. All right, welcome back to Frame Tribe. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us for the next hour. You taught me how to marvel. We taught you how to Dougie. So everybody learned something here. You know what we're going to learn about? We are going to learn about maybe, potentially, possibly, Street Fighter Five. Oh, <gasps> yeah, Street Fighter Five. I saw that. Uh, yeah, I saw it online. It was, uh, it was announced yeah. uh, recently. It was on uh, what uh, Ono's Twitter, actually. Yeah, he. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure most of you guys are following Ono on Twitter, and uh, he said it's in the in the. In Wait, the f- this is um. Am I saying am I saying this right? This is this is um. Well, yeah, it's Ono's Twitter. He said it's it's in the far distant future. I mean, it's coming, but it's in the far distant future. It's Ono, oh, oh, man. He, yeah, it's on Twitter. I don't want to do this. Huh? I I don't want to do this. Was can, this can, we, can we stop? I don't. I don't. No. Was this no. news? No, because every time no, because every time Ono opens his mouth, he just spews like just BS. Everything but, he says. No, take take it. No. <laughs> no. I'm not. No. You know what? No. No. You know what? I'm not doing this. No. I'm not. No. I'm not. No, I'm not. I mean, he's do another Ono story where he just says something. And we're just listening well, to delusional rantings of like some guy who may or may not have produced the music to Street Fighter Three. I don't know. He did Capital Battle Ball of the Cobra I don't know. Well, I'm doing it. No more. I mean, no. this is. God, no. Is this news? No, it's not news. It's not news. I'm not. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby. Get ourselves a treat! Quite an ever thing. That's right, folks. Let's play Refreshment Quiz. What's crunchy, crispy, tasty, butter drenched? You're right. Our hot buttered popcorn. What's bubbly, refreshing, ice cold, delicious, and thirst quenching? Right again. Our ice cold soft drinks. What's nourishing, flavorful, and so good to eat? Right again. Our mouth-watering candy bars. Hot buttered popcorn. Ice cold soft drinks. Mouth-watering candy bars. Why not get some in the lobby? Right now. All right, welcome back to Frame Trap here on iPlayWinner.tv. Uh, are you okay? Uh, you know, you know what? You know, can the show go on? Yeah, I'm cool. All right. Well, okay. So, anyway, moving right along to the next subject, uh, uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Um, looks like uh, Seth Killian was uh, uh, elaborating on uh, the, about gems. the gym system. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got it. <laughs> we got to do this one. This is news. This is this, news. This is news. This is news. Okay. So, hey, Seth, is this news? This news, buddy? <laughs> yeah, he looks concerned. <laughs> he looks very... <laughs> Seth, I, dog, I got, I got to level with you. You should be concerned. All right. But let's talk about Jen. So, Seth Killian, recent interviews, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe he's not... Maybe not terribly confident in the gem system. Um, you know, before we get into this, um, I, think, I think maybe we should state kind of our... Um, our feelings on the gem system. Mm. Um, I feel like Street Fighter Cross Second in general is a game that I've I've tried really hard to be. Or maybe I I, I shouldn't say I try hard to be optimistic because I am optimistic about the game. It's a game that I've been very excited about. Mm-hmm. You know, I uh, had a lot of fun playing it all, at all the different events I've seen it at. I really like the character roster. There's a lot about the game that I that I like and that I want to continue to enjoy, but. Mm-hmm. It seems as though every month or so, something new is introduced where it, started, start make, mm-hmm. it starts making me feel a little bit apprehensive. Um, yeah. I kind of liken it to Homer Simpson and the pig. Like, you know, oh, it's just a comeback mechanic. It's still good. It's still good. You know, oh, it's yeah. just some DLC. It's still good. It's still good. Oh, it's just a little monetization. It's still good. It's still good. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> I know. But it's not terrible. What do you, how do you feel? Um, you know, it's... it's... <sighs> 
it's been sort of the same roller coaster ride for me. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, you really want to like the game. You, know, you mm-hmm. sit down you, when, you, when I sat down and played it like at PAX and you know some some other you know random events. It's like okay, you know, I could see how this could work and mm-hmm. and uh, the core gameplay. I was actually really excited for it when it just seemed like a real honest fighting game. Yeah, <laughs> it, just like, had, it was, a, it yeah. was ch- like chain combos for accessibility. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I can I yeah. can deal with that. Yeah. And and it had just just two supers and basic two. basic defense system. No focus attack. No parries. No. no yeah, and I was like, like okay, yeah, you can't like FADC out of you know mm-hmm. special moves and stuff like that. So I was I was I was feeling it, but then and then you know Pandora came around. I was like, I was even still like, okay, that looks yeah. cool. They look like it looks like Tron. Yeah, people like, yeah, or something. All right, so, it's, yeah. It's, it's kind of kind of a, well, we thought it was a comeback mechanic. It's almost kind of the reverse. It's almost like a surrender button it seems <laughs> yeah. like uh, but yeah i'm with you i'm with you yeah and then but really when it's when when the gym system came around and you know those of you who watched previous episodes know that uh we're, we're just not too not too uh excited about it i guess yeah well um, i i i i got the concerned both, yeah. yeah concern yeah apprehensive yeah. um but it seems though the more we learn and and just, and just to be fair um no one has actually played true fire cross second with gems i don't believe like yeah, I don't, people yeah. like members of the public, other players, and I think this is. I think that's kind of what Seth was was talking about in this interview. Mm-hmm. This is an interview with what uh, Gama Gama Sutra. Gama Sutra, or, right? Exactly, and it seems like he was just saying. Uh, there's just a lot of confusion about the system because there, you know, nobody's really sat down with mm-hmm. it, and and very little bit has been revealed. I mean, what well, we had like just a couple dev dev, bo- dev blog posts mm-hmm. uh, about it, and they had you know a couple yeah. videos. And, and when stuff. they released that trailer, it was also kind of the reintroduction of Pandora. It was like, hey, we got two minutes to tell you everything in this game, and it's just throwing <laughs> yeah, it at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I remember when we actually showed it here in Frame Chat, we were both just like, oh, this is yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. it's like when you sit down and actually when you think about well how does the average player kind of dissect this mm-hmm. it was probably an information overload right and probably very frightening mm-hmm. so uh so in this interview in gama sutra you know um seth very concerned about kind of how gems were revealed he also said um because one of the other things is that everybody is kind of afraid that it's going to make it so, oh, you could just equip a certain kind of gem, like maybe strength gems to power up your character, and the next thing you know, they're going to like beat Justin Wong in a tournament, yeah, like, just, yeah, yeah. You know, stuff like that. But Seth actually, in a quote here, said, uh, I don't think there's any combination of gems which will help a weak player beat someone who's much stronger than them. Um, so... There, there is that, but I mean, it's just. I guess the thing is, is you're we're we're getting like two different messages, or just just different messages in general, because you know you see mm-hmm. you see that image that official image was released by Capcom and says you know common uh, uh, common problems in fighting games is like the difference uh, the skill gap between players, and yeah. then you know it's so it seems like they they you know with the chain combos and the gym system they are trying to make it more accessible and they are trying to make it so you don't get just you know if you are a new player you're not mm-hmm. getting completely steamrolled by uh, uh, someone who's who has you know a lot of experience so. Yeah. Uh, my, my my feeling on on these types of systems that are uh, put in the fighting games to you know to close that skill gap is I feel that whether it's uh, kind of buff mechanics like gems or it's mm-hmm. comeback mechanics like X Factor or uh, Ultra Combos and Street Fighter Four, um, I I almost feel like they do the opposite in terms of both accessibility and closing that gap because I I almost feel like the gap doesn't actually move it, it just kind of uh you know goes to like a, a different level where it's like yeah it'll it'll improve weaker players right but uh the, those those well, top yeah. players now they have <clears throat> even greater weapons to destroy you with you know and it's yeah. like this this gap it just kind of uh just fluctuates a bit but i feel like that gap will always remain the same oh i think i think that's definitely <laughs> That's definitely a good point because if you look at, like, say, Street Fighter Four, a lot of people are saying, "Well, okay, you have invincible backdashes, you know, combos are easier, FADC." Mm-hmm. But look who's winning the tournament still, you know, Ricky Ortiz, yeah, and really, absolutely. you know, the same same guys who've been, you know, winning Street Fighter tournaments for years now. Mm-hmm. Um, that's with, with, notable, that's a, with notable exceptions here and there. That said, these games don't have a, an auto block, <laughs> you know, or an auto that is true. throw tech. So, but also on um, to the other end of accessibility, mm-hmm. um, I I feel like Street Fighter Cross Second, as we mentioned, is a game that started out. Very simple, um, mm-hmm. you know. Had the chain co- chain combos to make doing flashy combos easier. Mm-hmm. No uh, complex defense systems to worry about. How am I going to block this, or how am I going to defend myself? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like introducing this, um, you know, rather complex gem system. All the different uses for meter, uh, the Pandora mode. I feel like now we're back to that point where I, th- I feel like an average player will look at this and be like, "This is a lot to learn." Like, That's in true. order to yeah. just. All I want to do is punch this other dude in the face, and now I have <laughs> yeah. all this other stuff to think about. You know, and I, I think that's sort of the allure of Street Fighter Four. Actually, is it was pretty pretty straightforward. Right. Just you know, f- 
one on one fighting, and you know, had you had an ultra and you know different uses for meter and stuff. But mm -hmm. really, when you look at it, it's pretty pretty simple to to see what's going on and, and sort of you know what what the game's all about. But one th one thing that uh, that caught my eye, I think it was in this was in this interview or maybe it was one of the uh, the others. But he was saying that uh, you can play without equipping gyms. Right. What do you think about that? Yeah, he did say. I mean, one of the one of the big uh, kind of outcries in the community mm -hmm. in general has been, you know, well, we better be able to play this game without turning off gems. And while you cannot turn off the gems, you mm -hmm. can choose to just not equip any. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that either way, um, some gems are bound to be banned, or there. If we do decide as a community to play uh, with gems, mm -hmm. I feel like. No matter what, there will be gems that are just flat out out of play for organizational purposes, not so much right. for balance. Because you have to remember that when we do tournaments, you know, we always do them, you know, primarily offline. Like Evo is an offline tournament. True, yeah. All our regionals are offline tournaments. You have to show up in person. That always presents uh, different challenges, especially when it comes to DLC. We've seen this with, you know, Blade Blue, Mortal Kombat. Uh, Marvel's Capcom 3, which is why earlier we mentioned, well, you don't see many Jill players because most tournaments don't want yeah. to download these characters for each and every console. So I feel like when it comes to the gems, we're going to have to face some sort of decision where if we want to go ahead and play with gems, it'll have to be something like, oh, only the gems that are available on the disc. And, yeah. and prior to a tournament, you should probably wipe that hard drive to make sure and then kind of install the game fresh. Because I, I feel like, you know, if, if some guys are like, well, I play with the Best Buy exclusive gems, you know, yeah. and like, well, the tournament organizer decided to buy it from Fry's, you know, so tough luck, you know, it, it, it creates these, these weird situations that, that make things hard for just, just the community and organizers in general. Well, I think, uh, like, not it, even a ga it's not even a gameplay question to me, it's just, uh, um, you know, convenience almost. Well, it did, that quote just gave me, it gave me a little, little more hope for the game in, in the tournament setting, because mm -hmm. if you don't have to, uh, you know, apply, uh, equip any gyms, right. uh, then, yeah, you just go in and, and just play the game, uh, you know, yeah. as is, uh, but then I started thinking, it's like, well, yeah, it might take time to to equip a few gyms, but even if they had a sort of set uh, gyms that you could use, yeah, like you're saying, like the default gyms, mm -hmm. and you know, just going into it, you know, would it really take you know uh, that much more time than say choosing your assists in Marvel? You know, if you, already, if you already kind of knew what you're going for, if it was a limited amount of gyms, you know, if there's like. But if it's still like eighty gyms right out of the, right out of the box, yeah. you know, then it might be a little tough. But and I also know. just I also thought about this. There's also some things that we aren't aware of uh, concerning Street Fighter Cross Tekken and the gem system, which is there could be unlockable gems. Like oh, mm -hmm. beat beat the game with Ryu and get like a special gem for Ryu or something like that. Like there's mm -hmm. also there's just so many variables to this gem system mm -hmm. that you know uh, for, uh, from my perspective, I'm not even. I know a lot of the outcry right now is like, well, I don't I don't want to deal with these gems if they're going to be overpowered or it's going to imbalance the game in some way i'm actually not even so much concerned about that because that uh, you know all these games are imbalanced in some way there's always gonna be characters who are more yeah. powerful and you know and there's always going to be uh players who opt to play lesser you know lesser powerful characters who will make those well, characters better so yeah, it's like, I, for me it's just yeah I mean, I think, in, you know, not to just uh, to, to go off too much of a tangent here, but I think that actually adds to a lot of the drama in fighting games when you have uh, mm -hmm. characters that are, you know, because a lot of people are like, oh, I want the most balanced fighting game ever, ever. You know, every character should have a chance against another character. And that's, you know, obviously true to some degree. You don't want mm -hmm. the worthless characters. But, you know, having these characters, these, these underdog characters, you know, be top-tier characters... Um, you know, again, yeah. that's what adds to, the, adds, to the, adds to the drama of these games, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also... Uh uh, you know, concerning the community's adoption of the gem system, I mean, again, we have until March to see how this shakes out. We got a long, long ways to go. And like I said at the beginning of this, uh, you know, no one has ever really played with the gems to begin with. So we don't even actually know how they'll, they'll affect a real match. For all we know, these could, you know, even powerful setups could be fairly insignificant, you know, like maybe it'll just, just tip the balance. Like, who, who really knows? But um, the thing we need to think about is if this game was developed from the start to be like, okay, this is going to have this gem system where you can customize the buffs of these characters. Um, I feel like if we decide as a community to not play with that, with gems, mm. I think that's just like playing no items in Smash Brothers. <laughs> you know, that's kind, of, that's kind of what we're doing. It is a core element of this game. Mm -hmm. And if we decide, well, we're just not going to use that core element, um, you know, that kind of opens the floodgates to kind of look at kind of look at other things. What what if that's almost as if we decide, hey, you know, like Street Fighter Three Third Strike, 
I think we should turn on air blocking in the <laughs> in the game direction. in the system <laughs> direction. Yeah, this would make this game much better. It's like it is it, not that we would do that now. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that it does kind of open the floodgates for things like that in the future. So you know when Tekken Cross Street Fighter comes out or Tekken Tag Two comes out the console and it has some weird things. Um, well, what yeah. I what I think might be a good approach um, is maybe I mean again you know this game is really far off, mm-hmm. but uh, maybe for the first three months or so just. In, in, in a tournament setting, just play the game with uh, uh, not equipping gyms, and then you know maybe more of a casual setting, just see how things pan out, and then if it seems like it hmm. m- might be able to to include that in in the, the tournament setting, then maybe move forward with it. But yeah, we'll yeah. see. Yeah, that that is the tricky part. I mean, this is not going to go away for a very very long time. On on one final note, before we move on to our, our next subject here for Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Um, my also my also kind of fear and apprehension about gem system is just kind of the monetization aspect. And coming mm-hmm. from a social gaming background, I love me some monetization. I find yeah. I find that stuff really fascinating. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of exploring how microtransactions work and stuff like that. That's just kind of fascinating to me. But it does make you think like, well, if they're gonna be selling gems. To me, it's like for the cynical side of me, wants to be like, well. Isn't this also kind of a way that they can kind of hit up players more often than, say, uh, costume packs or character packs? It seems like something like this. Just, mm-hmm. It should be so easy to program that you could just do weekly gem releases and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So some of that stuff is kind of lurking in the back of my head, and the devil on my shoulder is like, that's awesome. <laughs> but then the good part is me like, that would be absolutely horrific. And uh, to be honest, I hope it doesn't come down to... Uh, well, I mean, kinda... like, I, don't play, I don't play video games. I only play fighting games. Uh, so how, how, I mean, does, how does that work in other... In, uh, video games like uh, I mean is, is there any other games out there that really have like a weekly release of oh well yeah DLC you know or? like like social games like for example if you have like you know just to, just to kind of go off the top of my head like Farmville like you could buy new buildings and that has better earnings and therefore if oh, you are right, spending okay. money right, to okay. buy this building that will give you more earnings you are basically paying for an advantage or free to play MMOs you can pay for better armor or better weapons and mm-hmm. a lot of these games do week, weekly releases like that um, and then you typically see that in social games free to play MMOs and it's something that has been explored in the console space and especially not in fighting games right but there is a lot of money being left on the table for developers and publishers like this to you know maybe think about doing something such as that so that is my greatest fear um and one more thing uh is actually has to do with the pandora mode i didn't make a lower third for this but seth in in a separate interview actually said that quote we are going to try and make pandora more interesting or just cut it I'm not above cutting it, even though we just announced it. Mm-hmm. So, wait, did you say you didn't make a lower third for it? No, I did not. I just made sad Seth. No, it says Pandora mode could be. Oh yeah, it's right there. <laughs> All right. Oh well. Uh, yeah. Um, real honest news shows. Real honest. That's news what we bring to you. Um, well, okay. So that what's 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 interesting about that is he was like because uh, I read that interview too, and he was kind of like, yeah, well, we're still tinkering around with it, yeah. and he was like, it seemed like he he wasn't even really impressed with it. That was sort of the tone that I got got from from the interview. But yeah. it's it, the, it seems like the difference between Pandora and and the gym system is they're like, well, Pandora, we're still messing around with it. Hey, we could just toss it out completely. While with gyms, they're like, this is here to stay. Yeah. This is the part of the game. So yeah. and and for those of you at home who are going like, well, what's the Pandora mode? The Pandora mode really quickly is uh, something of a mechanic where when you have less than 25% of your health, you can sacrifice your partner to basically get a really big supercharge. You have infinite super meter to do EX moves, but your life kind of drains. And the example that Seth used on why this is worthless is that it turns out you don't take damage in Pandora. It just gradually drains. So theoretically, uh, uh, let's uh, say we're playing, you activate Pandora, and I kind of have the same health. I wait for like, You're like, come, I'm like, come at me, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, and then know what I do is I go okay, and then I wait a second or two, and then I activate. Right. So then, what will happen <laughs> yeah. is you'll die, and yeah. then I'll live like by a second yeah, or two. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. that, yeah, that is just one of those head scratchers where it's like, well, why did they even? program that to begin with like well who who thought that was a good idea the pandora mode i mean we played it here at ultimate norcal versus capcom uh you know pandora mode was available i tried it out died instantly <laughs> everybody who tried pandora mode just yeah. died like you know right away and everybody walked away just feeling like this is absolutely not worth it um and it, and that is actually um that is one of the the more troubling aspects of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, in that we are getting fairly late in the development stage, and there's still like, ooh, there's these major features we've introduced that just we just might just throw it away, and that to me is kind of troubling, uh, just from a development standpoint of well, 
do you, do we actually know what's going on with this? Like, mm-hmm. it, it seems like they're just kind of throwing stuff at the wall and, and seeing what sticks. Well, I mean, look at Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I mean, I love that game. You know, vanilla Marvel 3, you love it. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think, you know, most of us agree it wasn't really a, a complete game, you know, with, with Ultimate coming out, you know? And, yeah. you know, maybe that's just... So you think the, we'll get a Super Street Fighter Cross Tekken with Pandora mode in it? Like, hey, guys, we're finally bound uh, You know, I mean... Possibly, I, I just yeah. you know if that does happen, I hope they take the the, the DLC uh, route, but um, you know just up, you know just download the update. But um, yeah. you know it just seems like, and then you know again with like Soul Calibur coming out in in January, and it seems like that game was just announced. You know, it just seems like companies just uh, uh, fighting game developers in, in general are just saying, hey, look, you know these games are connected online. We can always make adjustments later. Let's just get them out there, get them in the players' hands, see what's broken, see what see what works, see mm-hmm. what doesn't work, and then we'll change it from there. You know whether or not you know I'm, I'm not really too hype about that that approach, yeah. but uh, you know. Well, to that end, I would hope that more developers kind of take a cue from Nether Realms with Mortal Kombat, where they were just releasing free regular updates. They're, they are still tweaking that game, which yeah, which is which yeah. is which is a rock is slippery slope. Yeah, but I would rather they do consistent free updates than try and hit you up with the full disc every you know eight to ten months. I, I just, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, I'd rather them just get it as, uh, you know, to, as close as possible to, to just a, a complete game right out of the gates, you know, because I, I actually really liked Mortal Kombat, but mm-hmm. what turned me off is all the balance up, updates mm. and the patches. It's like, for someone who, I mean, honestly, I play that game kind of casually. I, I really right. like it, and, you know, I play in tournaments here and there, but, you know, with all these other games, and, you know, I get so busy, I don't really have a ton of time to devote to you know, I could I barely keep up with the Ultimate Marvel <laughs> change log, you know, and there's new changes coming out for Mortal Kombat, like, you know, uh, every every uh, every couple of weeks. So for me, that was sort of a deterrent uh, as far as, you know, pl- playing the game more often. I was like, mm-hmm. well, I just kind of want a, the complete game. I want the game, and that's just how it is. And, mm-hmm. and and as I mentioned a little earlier, so, you know, I, I know some characters are going to be a little overpowered, some stuff is going to be a little goofy, but, uh, you know, it's your job as a player to, to get around that stuff. And, that's true. And I think there's little changes could be made, like, you know, with Wolverine, Akuma, Phoenix, there's some pretty obvious stuff, but then, you know, from there, you know, I don't know. So yeah. we'll see. Well, he, let's talk about something that might, you know, make us both kind of happy. New character, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I'm a fan. Oh yeah, I think we, I think we have a. We do have a screenshot. Yeah, this, it's Asuka Kazama. It's, it's Asuka. Uh, Sorry, Asuka Kazama. Is it? Os- I thought it was Asuka. As I said, Asuka. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, I just screwed up the first time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Real on his. Hey, this, this 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 comes from uh, your favorite guy. On you know, <laughs> are, is this news? Are we going to go over this? Yeah. So there's Das Boot, and let's be honest, that could not possibly be anyone else. For those who, for of you who are not familiar, Asuka Kazama is the cousin to Jin, the niece to Kazuya, uh, the Mishimas. Mm-hmm. Uh, introduced in Tekken Five, always been something of a fan favorite. Mm-hmm. Had that ending where her cousin fell on her boobs, and it was kind of awkward. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm excited. I'm not sure if I'm. Excited about Street Fighter Cross Tekken, but I like the characters. Yeah, well, um, I guess she was already kind of kind of revealed. Like they t- they teased her in. Uh, oh, was she in one of those trailers you see? Yeah. Like just just a fragment of a second. Mm-hmm. So just like Lily was originally kind of a. And that's the thing with like a lot of the. You yeah. know, I don't mean to be too much of a downer, but like, so I feel with like a lot of the character reveals for Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I feel like we you know we saw. Do you feel like, like that one Rage Face like? Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like I feel like we, you know, with the with the little teasers they send out with the videos, and then you you kind of figure it out. So so yeah, so, you know, uh, beforehand. Uh, Except now, now they're like, here's like six characters. Eh, figure it out. Yeah, I, you know, I I, I didn't play Oscar like really at all in, in Tekken, so I don't really have too much of an opinion. Yeah. On the well, when she was Sorry. introduced in Tekken Five, she was actually kind of considered uh, one of those characters that they put in the game to be like, well, here's a character for for new players because she had really oh, really right. easy combos. Uh, not particularly strong, mm-hmm. but she was a character that a new player could feel strong with. Is that, you know? If I remember correctly, she had um, I think she had like a lot of counter counterattacks. Um, she was very uh, in, heavily influenced by uh, Jun Kazama. Like she had, she had uh, some of the same moves, so I believe she did actually do. She did have. No, some I think she had you know, like counter like counterattacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah we call Eris. Yeah, we, we need to get Eris on the line. Stat. <laughs> we don't know jack shit about that. Guy. Oh, yeah. speak, play, speak for yourself. <laughs> I play. I play Steve Fox. He's like the uh, most overpowered uh, character in Tekken Six. That's right. Um, so you know. Well, you know what? We should talk about a game that you you do know a lot of. Oh yeah, I'm hyped for this one. Yeah. So we're, when we come back, King of Fighters 13, change log, lots of crazy videos, a lot of fuah. <laughs> when we come back.
All right, we are back here on Frame Trap on iPlayWinner.tv. King of Fighters 13. Ooh, it's next month. I can't wait. Uh, it's this month. Oh, it's November. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so excited for King of Fighters 13. Yep. Oh, my God. Yes, it's November. That also means Skyrim and, and Saints Row the Third and all these video games that you have absolutely <laughs> no idea what I'm talking about, but I am very excited about, and King of Fighters 13 is one of them. Yeah. Uh, let's just roll the footage. Do we have footage? Yeah, dude, we totally got footage. We got footage for days. We're supposed to oh. play this later. <laughs> 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 all right, so we're going to... We're Okay, all right. 98 Yori DLC <laughs> character. <laughs> Buy him day one. Do some hype is hell combos. All right, just like all right first a little credit. This is from uh, the uh, EX Dragon Project. These uh, dudes uh, out in London. I think they're out in London. Uh, anyway, this is from... Uh, in. Um, an expo, MCM Expo, which is like a Comic Con, uh, uh, a video games uh, sort of deal, and uh, so Rising Star Games, who uh, have been blowing it up out there with um, King of Fighters, they you know, brought the game there, and they had uh, the DLC Iori, and so they got direct feed uh, of them, and we're you know as you see uh, put together some pretty pretty nasty combos with them, and um, and Rising Star made this possible. <laughs> yeah, they said good. Nice. go nuts. Uh, it looks like so, um, but it looks like yeah, his uh, his ex fireball keeps keeps the opponent in place. Uh, looks like he can you know f super cancel you mm -hmm. know off damn near everything. Uh, <laughs> well, that's King of Fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he, he, look, he, he can uh, drive cancel. He looks like he. Uh, I don't know if it was in that video, but there, they had another one too. But they set it to private for some reason. I don't know what, what was going on. Um, but it. He can do a series of his recas and then drive cancel into into an, another. And um, you know, if you're watching the video or you've been keeping up with with the game at least to some degree, you're probably thinking, "Man, this looks like a really strong character." But you know, S SNK actually yeah, ca that's, that's pretty that's pretty much just King of Fighters. Well, no, S S S <laughs> SNK like actually that. came right out of the gates and said, "You know, we're going to try to make all these DLC characters like really really powerful, just so basically people will play them, so they're not like um, oh, so you're you're paying for an advantage." So, I mean, something, something like that. I mean, slope, uh, slope. but it's it's like at first I was kind of on the fence, but I'm like, okay, well, at least maybe you'll see more of these characters being played. You know, mm -hmm. unlike you know the Jills and the Shumas, were, you know, like I think a lot of you know a lot of players feel like, oh, okay, yeah. these are just kind of like th you know throwaway characters or just put in there for fun or you know whatever. So, yeah. um, but I don't know. He looks like he's be pretty. I, I, I don't know. I, I think I've said this like 20 times on the show in the past, but I'm just I'm just glad they put him in the game because mm -hmm. I'm you know ever since I think like King of Fighters 12, um, you know it wasn't really feeling the the redesigned Yori with the claws and stuff. You know I know yeah you know. yeah I mean I I'm all for kind of changing like and King of Fighters series has always been known for changing the looks of characters whether it's like sure. the clothes yeah. they wear like kind of the effects they do but yeah. you know, with Yori they it, it was basically like let me see if I can put this in, in Street Fighter terms it was basically if you took Ryu and you said um no nah, that's not really working we're gonna make him a he should be more like Adon. And now all of a sudden you have Ryu doing like Jaguar kicks and like yeah. flippy stuff. It was just it's it's just not not the character, not the character. Mm -hmm. So um but both of them are in the game. So if you like New Yori, you got New Yori. If you want the old Yori, you can give him like five bucks or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh and you can get that. But also a lot of changes uh coming to the console version, a lot of rebalances. Mm -hmm. Chris Seg, do we have do we have the footage? We do not have the footage. No, we don't have footage of that. We don't have footage of that. I blew it this time. Real honest news shows. <laughs> uh, uh, but we do have, uh, some of you might have seen this list. I think it was the third uh, blog yes. that they, um, uh, Min just went live on Justin TV. Uh, it's the third third blog that they released on the SNK dev blog for KOF 13. And um, going over, uh, you know, some char you know, a character that I play, Kyo, uh, but I think really the biggest change here is uh, with uh, Raiden. I am Raiden. Yeah, and <laughs> as, as many of you know, he his drop kick has uh, always been a huge problem yeah. in the game. Uh, you know, I think he charged for like 16 seconds, and it basically goes full screen, fully invincible. Full screen, full invincible, probably kills you. Yeah, it's like it does like 90 to 90 percent, 100 percent damage if you land it. it. I mean, you have to use meter and stuff. But it, regardless, it's it's notorious for being yeah. like both, one of the most. It's, a, it's just not cool because you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm doing really good. All of a sudden, just and you're dead. Yeah, let, let me see if I can find the. Um, Hmm. It's okay. So the actual notes say the the time to uh, they increase the time it takes to charge it, and I think uh, Kane three one seven from Dream Cancel he was saying that when he played it, he he held the button for like thirty seconds or something, and it still wasn't fully charged. Um, so I think they're really trying to take that away from uh, his overall uh, uh, 
play style. Right. And not removing the move, just kind of forcing you to be either be good with it or alter alter your mechanics. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Or just yeah, approach the, the character a little differently. And that's that's how they've been uh, approaching the changes yeah. just in general. Is they've been toning down certain moves, but then you know giving uh, 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 other moves you know new properties. So you remember in uh, Mortal Kombat two when you hold the low punch for Shang, Shang Tsung's fatality turn into a Motaro. I don't remember that. Sorry. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. It's been so oh, long. long. Yeah. All right. Um, but let's okay. see here. And uh, it looks like the you know the producer he 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 left notes for each character just sort of like uh, to talk about the different changes and why mm-hmm. they did it. And he says although the super drop kick has been weakened, weakened uh, sure recovery on giant bomb faint allows him to be played more trickily. <laughs> trickily. <laughs> trickily. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but if you there is a there is a video that goes along with this, and you'll see that he can yeah he can do like some feints and, and different grabs and stuff. So it looks like he'll still be a really strong, really uh, scary mm-hmm. character, you know, up close. But uh, you know, of course, there's a lot of other characters that uh, they covered here. But one that I want to go over is you know uh, pretty much my favorite character in KOF 13. It's Kyo, mm-hmm. and I, I feel like uh, with the changes here. Um, he's definitely going to be one of the, the best characters in the game. That's how I feel. Um, mm. it, right now, off his down four D, which is a t- it's sort of his classic two hit sweep. You know, right. That, that, it's, you know, it's not really even a sweep. It's just like this t- two hit. I'm doing it with my fingers right now. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a sweep. Yeah, it's, it's a sweep. sweep. But you can cancel the, the, the first hit into different attacks. But in the current game, only in the corner can you uh, combo into his fireball, um, fireball D, which is his up kicks. In mid screen, it whiffs. And, and it, with this Cha- uh, with this change, he can now combo the up kicks um, mid screen. So he and they even mentioned that he can combo into a lot of different moves, even more so than before off his up kicks. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's a that's a that's a great great change overall. But they are uh, nerfing his. Um, his running grab. I don't know the actual name of that, but uh, if any of you have seen me play KOF 13 here at Southtown, you probably see me like do that running grab, and then if it gets blocked, I'll just do a DP because you have, I think, like slight frame advantage. Uh, I, I think it's actually been coined the KOF 13 haunt special. In every in every fighting game, there's a haunt special. In Marvel, it's the the jump back beam with Akuma. In uh, Street Fighter 4, it's um, I think it's just wake up uppercut with some god. No, no, no. The haunt special is. Uh, is to do um, Tiger Uppercut, F-A-D-C, Fierce Tiger Uppercut. I think that's the scuncheon, but anyway. Um, <laughs> what, what's the difference? <laughs> yeah. So it, it, anyway, it, so in the, in the arcade version, yeah, you have slight frame advantage, so you can follow up with like even like, the, the smart thing to do is follow up with like close C, which is, is mm-hmm. close uh, punch and just follow up with a combo or just this basic frame trap. But now you can't really, you can't really get away with uh, as many shenanigans, mm-hmm. so... You know, just uh, the the overall. I, I'm just loving what they're doing with this game. They're taking away some of, the, you know, that's kind of a stupid thing mm-hmm. for a character to have. You know, just be able to take those types of risks. Yeah. And uh, but now they're 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 saying, okay, we're taking that away. We're making that that uh, uh, not as powerful, but uh, we're allowing him to you know combo yeah. off the, the up kicks from mid screen. So pretty, pretty actually, nice. you know what my favorite part of these changes were? Hmm. Uh, that they came with a video explaining them all. Yeah, you know the <laughs> yeah it's uh, yeah and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should not have gone straight face on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I, and I don't have it, but it is on iplaywinner.com. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it I think is. with the, the, the videos, I think they're, uh, you know, they're uh, it's obviously a. Uh, oh, there's a video right there. I want to yeah, play it. Yeah, it's on the I iPad. Well, you're going to make the stream lag now. <laughs> no, nah, I'm, I'm going to watch this. Okay. Um, all right, so right now, K Dash is doing some combos. They're pretty sick. Oh, actually, no, I want to talk about it. Here, give me, give oh, me okay. the iPad. I was going to turn it around. Did you have your own iPad. Yeah, I got my own iPad. All right, I'm pausing this. All right. Okay. Anyway, what you're watching? Uh, they actually, this is one other thing I want to go over. <laughs> now you're gonna, now you're gonna explain what I was watching. I was gonna explain. You what don't I even was know watching. what's going on. I know what's going on. I know what's going he's on. doing HD combos, and he's gonna put on his sunglasses and do some other ones. I know what's going on. I know King of Fighters. It's a very angry episode. <laughs> yeah. All right. So one system change that was also that they also detailed here, which I thought was uh, kind of cool, is uh, uh, they increase the amount of meter that you get for both uh, the, the the power and uh, HD mm-hmm. uh, meter when hit by attacks, and also um, will while uh, guarding. So they're saying that means you might want to shorten some of your HD combos because your opponents can be gaining more meter. So you mm-hmm. might want to end them a little bit a little bit quicker, depending on you know how much life they have left. And also, you know, if you're on the uh, the defensive while you're blocking in, in King of Fighters. Uh, you can press C and D at the same time, and uh, it's a basic, it's a basic, you know, get off me attack, it's a mm-hmm. blowback attack, and it just, you know, sends them flying across the screen. If you're, if you do it right while you're blocking an attack, and it takes meter, so it's the sort of thing. Well, if you're 
uh, you know, just relentless on offense, you know, the, the, the player on defense is going to be getting a lot of meter. Uh, okay. And it's just going to allow, allow, uh, allow for more situations where they can use the blowback attack. So, wow. uh, well, changes. well, we'll see how that one pans out. I think it's, you know, I think it's, I, I like it because, you know, you'll see, you'll see more combos and more flashy stuff in the game. But, um, you know, we'll see. Um, but, yeah, anyway, really hard for the game. Oh, November, totally. November, yeah, November 22nd. Yep. Very exciting. Yep. All right. When we come back, we're going to close this mother out. So stay tuned. That's his new move. Death Runner Love. Oh, okay. Oh. That's two Bomber. Oh, my God, Nemesis. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're back. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was just watching the video on my iPad since that's what I was told to do. I was just told to do it on my own. So why don't you, uh, why don't you, uh, you know, tell them about it. <laughs> Talking about the straight event. Okay. All right, Ultimate NorCal versus Capcom 2. This, oh, uh, shit. That, oh, yeah, that was hype. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty hype. All right. All right, I'm back. What's up? We got a great event uh, for Frame Trap next week, next yes, Tuesday. Yes, we do. Yeah, and uh, I know uh, many of you, I think most of you, uh, watched the last one. Um, and it was. Better. Yeah, it was pretty pretty awesome. Uh, and if you if you haven't missed it, I, don't, I can't imagine anybody's watching this uh, missed the last one. But uh, uh, we basically gathered up all the top NorCal uh, Marvel players, uh, uh, stuffed them here in Southtown Arcade. Capcom came by with um, Ultimate uh, Marvel vs. Capcom with uh, not all the characters, but uh, up know, to that point, yeah, a handful of the the, the new ones. And uh, we had a single elimination tournament, and um, it was awesome. Yes, I loved it. it. So we have uh, another one coming up uh, this this coming Tuesday. Uh, and it's going to have, this build is going to have all the characters. Woo. Phoenix Wright, Rocket Raccoon, all that stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of the same players that uh, we had last time, like uh, Dasa Bro, Filipino Champ. Hopefully mine comes this time. I know <laughs> Snake Dukes and... and uh, Crisis. S yeah, some of his crew came out. Yeah, Crisis. Uh, so, you know, a lot, a lot of the guys, uh, a lot of the same guys that were like on uh, Drum Struction stream, and, uh, you, see, you know, you see it Starbase and stuff. So, um, so yeah, basically, if you want to see the first... Legitimate footage of characters like Phoenix Wright, Rocket Raccoon, mm -hmm. uh, Nova, all these, all these really cool characters I've introduced recently. Tune in to Frame Trap next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific, same start time as always, and you will get to see top players playing Ultimate Marvel's Capcom 3. Uh, might, might be one of the last chance to really see top players going at it. At, at, a, at Ultimate Marvel before it's released. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, definitely, definitely one of the last times. Because I, I guess it's, it's going to be like two weeks. Yeah, in, it's, it's, it's rapidly approaching. Or it's, it's, it'll be a week after that, I guess. So, uh, yeah, right around the corner. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and I think we're going to have some horse head matches lined up. Horse head matches? Yeah, I think we're going to have even more than last time. Uh, hopefully, I think if it's if it's up to me, it is up to me. It's my damn show. Uh, we're gonna have it. <laughs> wait, wait a minute! I thought. <laughs> Did, all right, we're gonna have an hour. Is there, is there a prenup in here that this is your show? <laughs> my damn show! <laughs> Real honest news. Um, we're, <laughs> we're gonna have like an hour's worth of <laughs> horse head matches uh, to kick things well, off. Well, we might as well. It is your show. Hey, are we, Lord gonna, Nigel? Hey, we're gonna have a special guest next week, aren't we? Maybe, possibly. Possibly, because it, I don't know. It, you make the decision. It's your show. Are we gonna have? Are we gonna have a special guest? <laughs> since it's your show, you get the final say. Well, hey, I just show up. It, each it's, week. it's on. It's on. It's on your stream technology, Twitch TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your channel. It's on your company's thing. All right, so that's Frame <laughs> Trap. Frame Trap, everybody. 
yeah. Lord Nigel's show. Look, I'm so <laughs> mad. I just flipped, ruined my iPad case. It fell out. Where'd you get this from, Ikea? No, it's a dodo case. It's made right here in San Francisco. It's <laughs> a handcrafted. A dodo case? It's handcrafted. About, about right for you. And, and it's made. It has, has vanilla at extract in it. it. smells gorgeous. This has been Frame Trap for the week of November 1st. This has been the crazy. You know, I blame the lights. I'm getting a contact <laughs> high from these lights. It's like they, they put things in them that you're not supposed to have in the state of California. Frame Trap for the week of November 1st. You can follow us. On Facebook.com slash Frametrap. You can follow me at Twitter.com, Jared R. Twitter.com slash Haunts. Twitter.com slash I Play Wiener. <laughs> Why, you got me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Twitter.com slash Southtown Arcade and uh, Southtown Arcade.com. And they're also on. Uh, uh, on Facebook as well. So, All right. I'm going to take a nice cold shower. <laughs> and we will see you guys next week. Here's the thing that makes life so interesting. The theory of evolution claims that only the strong shall survive. Maybe so. Maybe so. But the theory of competition says just because they're the strong doesn't mean they can't get their asses kicked. That's right. See what? Every long shot come from behind underdog will tell you is this. The other guy may in fact be the favorite. The odds may be stacked against you. Fair enough. But what the odds don't know is that this isn't a math test. This is a completely different kind of test. One where passion has a funny way of trumping logic. So before you step up to the fighting stick, before the start button is hit and the clock starts ticking, just remember out here, the results don't always add up. No matter what the stats may say and the experts may think, and what the commentators may have predicted, when the fight is on, all bets are off. Don't be surprised if someone decides to flip the script and take a pass on yelling uncle. And then, suddenly as the old saying goes, we've got ourselves a real match.
your dive move, OCG, I think. Yeah, it's his new move. Death Warm Up. Oh, okay. Oh. That's super armor. <laughs> oh my god, Nemesis! <laughs>